Welcome to 10 Minute Fauna, the channel where each episode we explore the evolution, nature, and threats facing a species in a short 10 minute or less documentary. 10.8 million years ago, the Panthera lineage split from the Sedalaris, the prehistoric animal that is the common ancestor to the big cats we know today. The Panthera family quickly filled in niches all across the globe, diversifying into many distinct animals. The modern Panthera genus consists of the snow leopard, tiger, jaguar, lion, and common leopard. The common leopard's closest living relative is the lion, splitting from their common ancestor roughly 2.8 million years ago. The common leopard has many subspecies worldwide, with the rarest being the Amur leopard. Critically endangered, there are just a hundred of these animals left in the wild, limited to a small region in eastern Russia and northeastern China. The biggest Amur leopards can weigh upwards of 110 pounds. They are two and a half feet tall and four and a half feet wide. They have developed much wider paws and larger legs compared to their subspecies counterparts. This is an adaptation developed to help traverse the snow much more efficiently. Additionally, the Amur has developed extremely dense fur, allowing them to bear the extreme cold. This fur is typically a beautiful cream color covered with jagged black circles resembling roses called rosettes. For extra support from the cold, the Amur wraps its long, bushy tail around its body like we would do with a scarf. This leopard can reach incredible short burst speeds of up to 60 kilometers or 37 miles per hour with a vertical jump of 10 feet. Even more impressive is its 19 foot horizontal lunge. Unsurprisingly, its preferred hunting strategy is to hide for long periods of time and then pounce on its prey before they realize what's even happened. They have developed extremely sharp teeth and powerful jaws to assist in capturing prey on their initial strike. The element of surprise is necessary because the Amur is a solo hunter and does not have the required stamina to keep up the chase. Most often, this animal hunts at night and typical prey include deer, wild boar, badgers, and hare. Being a strict carnivore, it does not mix its diet. The animal's preferred habitat is the temperate rainforest, but it will settle in mountain ranges if necessary. Each leopard holds a territory of 19 to 120 square kilometers and is extremely solitary. The exception, of course, is mating and raising cubs. Litters are small, consisting of just two individuals on average. Cubs stay with their mothers for two years, learning how to fend for themselves. In the wild, the Amur lifespan is 10 to 15 years, but has been known to live up to 21 years in captivity. Until the late 19th century, their geographic range covered Eastern Russia, Manchuria, North China, and Korea. Due to habitat loss, that range has shrunk significantly. In 1950, the wild population of Amur leopards was around 2,400. By 1970, that number had shrunk to just 30 individuals. The sudden population decrease is a result of extreme logging and farming that took place in the Amur habitat up until 1983. During this time, there was a severe shortage of prey, and many of the leopards were forced to invade farms and kill livestock just to survive. This further dropped the population because farmers were killing leopards in droves in order to protect their farm. Unfortunately, poachers also target the Amur because its pelt can sell for up to $1,000 US. The population showed a slight increase into the 1980s and early 2000s, holding a consistency of around 40 individuals. However, in the last 15 years, there has been a sharp increase in numbers, with 60 individuals found in 2010, 84 in 2017, and just over 100 as of 2021. This is largely due to conservational efforts, but despite this, the Amur leopard faces serious genetic challenges. In 2002, a research project was undertaken to determine the genetic variation among wild Amur leopards. Researchers did this by extracting DNA from multiple Amur leopards and comparing it. Their conclusion was that the Amur leopard had the lowest genetic diversity among all leopards and was at serious risk of genetic depletion. Genetic depletion is when there is a really low genetic diversity among a group causing recessive disorders to pass from parent to child much more frequently. This often results in individuals dying off before they even have the ability to reproduce. In 2007, Wildlife Conservation Society Russia did an analysis on three wild and more leopards 
and found that all three had heart murmurs. Here you can see a murmur versus a regular heartbeat. This concern, along with habitat protection, is being addressed by organizations such as the WCS, Phoenix Fund, World Wildlife Fund, and the Amur Leopard and Tiger Alliance. In recent years, these organizations have set up camera poaching traps, done regular poaching patrols, lobbied for conservation areas, educated locals and law enforcement on how to deal with these animals without killing them, and have dug deeper in on their biomedical research to help with the genetic issues the Amur Leopard is facing. These efforts have not been in vain. In 2012, the Russian government declared a protected area called Land of National Leopard Park, which extends 65,000 acres, covering all breeding areas and 60% of the Amur habitat. A jail sentence of two years can also be given to someone caught with a dead Amur leopard. All these measures have more than doubled the population in just a few short years. Now to answer the question, is it too late for the Amur leopard? Genetic depletion now seems a bigger threat than conservation due to the efforts being put forth by the Chinese and Russian governments to save these animals. Even though the population is bouncing back, genetic diversity takes much longer to recover than population. This is because all current specimens are related to the initial 30 that were left there in 1970. Without a genetic diversity boost, this population increase will be very short-lived because more health issues like the heart murmur will manifest and more leopards will die off before they have the ability to breed. Luckily, there are just under 200 or more leopards in captivity which contain more genetic diversity than the wild population. Hopefully, the species can be saved through selectively releasing captive and more leopards into the wild, thus strengthening the gene pool. Plans to do this have already been started, and reintroduction is supposed to take place within the next one to two years. Knowing all this, my answer would have to be no. It's not too late for the Amur Leopard, but the odds definitely aren't in their favor. The only chance this animal has for survival is by getting a genetic diversity boost from formerly captive and current wild leopards breeding with one another in order to eliminate the passing on of recessive genes. This needs to be done alongside the current conservation expansion. I'll link the charities below in case anyone would like to do a little more research. This is my first video and I'd really appreciate any sort of feedback in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please like. And if you really enjoyed it, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.